All right, you guys, so I'm here at the Skyway, uh, just parked in the garage, and uh, doors are about to open. And uh, this takes me straight over to the, um, to the convention center. So you can see right here. It's pretty cool. That's a real nice view downtown Minneapolis. So you guys know I've made videos on, I have a couple videos on, on sauna use and, and heat shock protein and so forth. and. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and here's a poster presentation from UR. I'm Brandon Jones. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And from the University of Northern Michigan. Northern I'm Michigan. UP. Great. Um, and this study is fascinating. So, was this your idea that you wanted yes. to? Yes. Okay. So I heard from a bodybuilding friend this theory that sauna use could help increase muscle hypertrophy. I yeah. tried it myself and mm -hmm. really liked the relaxation feeling, so I sure. want to try a real scientific study on it. And so, um, what was the um, what was the protocol? So, what was the protocol of the uh, sauna use? How long and in 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 what order in in, in relation to the workout? Yeah, so it's 15 minutes after a full body lifting session. Okay. And it's 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. About 110, 120 Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. and 80 percent humidity, which really made the hot factor. So it, this is like a wet sauna or a dry sauna? Wet sauna. Wet sauna. So okay. Traditional ah, steam sauna. I see. Yeah. Okay. So most of them are in dry sauna. So it is kind of a different study, which is nice. Okay. You know, the difference between dry and hot saunas. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what did you find? So nothing was statistically significant, mm -hmm. but when we're looking at change in lean body mass and change in heat shock protein 70, uh -huh. the group that was using the sauna did increase the most in both of those factors compared to the group that was just using resistance training and relaxation as more of a placebo sauna. Gotcha. But if you're looking at statistics, lean body mass, the p-value is 0.169, mm -hmm. so not very close. Heat shock protein 70 correlation got fairly close at 0.096, mm -hmm. and strength was also not close. But something interesting is that the change in strength did not correlate with the change in lean body mass. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, so we're thinking it's mainly more skill-based, or Correct. the sauna was slightly too much of a catabolic stimulus. Right, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. But it was a catabolic stimulus, but it seemed to have an anabolic effect? Right, so yeah. th this study right here, talking more on the hormones of hyperthermia, uh -huh. will really show you that the increase in growth hormone and at a certain level heat can be slightly anabolic. Hormones gotcha. are very fluctuate a lot. Yes, correct. And too much heat might might, might, might turn the balance in right. some way. Some okay. of the studies are saying around 15 minutes becomes very catabolic for sure. Okay. It's too much stress. Gotcha. I kind of think this as almost like a cool down. Just enough stress to help you recover. Uh -huh. You don't want to add more stress on top of the workout. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So here's a study on testosterone and cortisol responses after short-term HIT. Okay, and as you guys know, I talk about the benefits of HIT and how cardio can build muscle. Well, this is a form of cardio, be it anaerobic, if you will, it's still cardio. So let's take a look at what they did. So each session included four to six 30-second bouts of high-intensity cycling separated by four minutes recovery. All right, and what they found was that HIT has beneficial responses of cortisol and the testosterone cortisol ratio, which may reflect a specific drive towards anti-catabolic, which means muscle preservation or preventing muscle loss uh, adaptations. So as you can see here, testosterone levels were not significantly different, okay? So they were about the same, but if you look at cortisol, there's a significant reduction in cortisol after the hit. And that alters the ratio of testosterone to cortisol, favoring more of an anabolic and less catabolic environment, which kind of illustrates the muscle building effects of HIT.
try bodybuilding. I'm telling you, it's all about breaking the myths, man. Debunking the myths about you can't put on size being a cardio machine. I just redlined this piece, man. All right, we're here with the title of the study is Fat Mass and Not Heart Recovery is Associated with Cardio Respiratory Fitness in Young Sedentary Adults. And I'm here with Matthew Thomas, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Matt Thomas. Matt Thomas, all right, nice to meet you. It's and so, could you just please, um, just briefly explain the purpose, like what you were looking for, and then more importantly, what you found? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, heart rate recovery um, is a measure it's, it's, that's been used as a clinical indicator mm -hmm. of mortality and morbidity, particularly in older adults. Right. Um, but, you know, it's usefulness in terms of um, as a, being able to uh, predict cardiorespiratory fitness levels mm -hmm. um, really is a bit unclear, um, specifically in young sedentary adults. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we wanted to look at the association between measures of heart rate recovery following a maximal graded exercise test. Okay. Um, and, and we also wanted to look at associations between body composition and um, um, Cardiorespiratory fitness as well. What was the? What did you use to track uh, assess body composition? What was the? Uh, De we use the DEXA scan. Oh, okay, yeah, gold uh, standard. Yeah, the gold, the gold standard. So, and and you found that uh, that VO2 peak was not associated with the uh, with heart recovery. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So, um, for all the, for absolute and relative me measures of heart rate recovery, um, we found that they were not associated with uh, cardiorespiratory fitness level. Um, but when we look at body composition, which this has been shown in the past, mm -hmm. that measures of adiposity, specifically body fat percentage and fat mass, was significantly, and in this case negatively associated um, with VO2 peak. Wow. And so basically, you know. Incredible. For our conclusion, it seems like adiposity, uh -huh. um, you know, does influence uh, VO2 peak. Um, but heart recovery, although it can be used as a measure of mortality and morbidity in mm -hmm. older adults, is not necessarily uh, associated with uh, cardiorespiratory fitness. That's fascinating. So the inverse relationship was the lower the percentage of body fat, the higher the VO2, the higher the VO2 peak. Correct. Yeah, I mean that's unbelievable. That's fascinating. So, anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.